right, welcome back Instagram and welcome back uh, YouTube. I think we're live on YouTube. We got an Hello, excellent Timothy. connection. And I got my notes ready. Getting ready for Sunday tea read. Yes. Episode four. Sorry we're a little bit late. Of course the internet went down right before we were about to start. Yeah. But we got it all sorted out. Pretty mm -hmm. good. Pretty good. Yeah. And we're gonna brew some uh, Longjing, not Longjing. Not, not Longjing, Longjing from. Not the, Longjing, Longjing. Uh, Guizhou, Guizhou, I think. Guizhou province, yes. Mm. So yeah, we're gonna have a little green and tea. And use a old style, traditional style brew. Just use the yeah glass. Yeah, I remember one of my first times having it in glass. Well, we had it at home a little bit, but right. in the, in China in Mengding, remember, they always do the uh, Gan Lu and tumbler. And they had like beer mugs, which I thought was really cool. Those one with handles. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Simmerjeet on Instagram and Lonis and Baron Ava Baron Akarovna. Oof. Sorry if I butchered that. Anyway, welcome everybody um, to Sunday Tea Read mm. with Not Long Jing. Ming Tian, Not Long Jing. Ming Tian, yeah. Early harvest, Long Jing. So, uh, yeah, sorry we're a little bit late. We had a little technical difficulty right before we got started. Hey, Brandon on YouTube. Yeah, wouldn't be a live stream without tech issue. You can say that again. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh. I think we're doing pretty good though, considering. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get started. We'll dive right in now that we're rocking and rolling. Um, for those of you on Instagram, we're just gonna do the quick intro on Instagram, but because we're gonna be reading along sunday tea book is all about reading books articles and papers that are originally in chinese or maybe they have a translation but it's a little bit dicey mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go over those because there's tons of information that is really hard to access that's available in those kind of formats we're going to and we decided well actually you guys suggested that we do something like this we thought mm -hmm. it's a great idea yeah. so here we are so um we're going to do a live translation and the reason that's amazing is because unlike if you read a really well translated paper that's good you get the information you get some good stuff for sure but in the act of translating it with us we've got our native speaker chinese who re and a tea person who really understands china not only mandarin and chinese but tea language and we're going to we'll get see that a we'll see that in we'll see that in today's yeah we were yeah. and um You've also got me who reading the translation might I'm going to have those questions and we've got you guys out there. So if you guys have questions, I'm going to read the original text and uh, you guys chip in with comments. Uh, give us a nice detailed question if you want us to answer something in particular that you found confusing about the text that I didn't bring up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically And you can help us with some translation if we don't use the right word or you if we yes. have difficulty come up with some uh, specific wording or yes you guys you know? have already been very yes. handy with that I'm an engineer so my English background is not so excellent so I've seen a few helpful words thrown out that uh, that we've actually adopted in the finished translation which will be uh, posted up on the in the description thereafter right right yeah so what's the book we're doing today <laughs> <laughs> just kidding we just ate, so I'm a little bit doughy. By a little bit, I mean a lot doughy. I have that food coma. I just feel like uh, just sitting here and not talking. Yeah, we've got. <laughs> we knew we had green tea coming up, so we really worked hard mm. to get a little lunch in our tummy before, because green tea is a little bit stripping too. Make me a little bit hungry sometimes. So, and if you were on Instagram, you saw the pizza we had, a little kimchi pizza action. Yeah. Yes, and we had a Sunday. I call that a Sunday heartbreak because there's no meat. When everything's ready, we realize, oh my god, we didn't have proper meat for pizza. Yeah, we forgot to pull it, we forgot to pull it out, or we, I don't know, we couldn't find the meat, so we just had a cheese pizza. Yeah. With kimchi, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just and smoked tofu, okay? The smoked tofu is a pretty great... Smoked tofu curd. Yeah, tofu curd, yeah. Really great texture, really great smoking. Right. So the book we're doing, continue on the uh, China, China Tea book, uh, which is written by my mom, Jian Li. And this one comes with English translation. However, it's a little bit like uh, interesting to read the English version. Yeah. That's why we do that. Great information on basics. Uh, it's good for people who just get into tea, but as well as those who are pretty advanced, but to come back to the basics and uh, we can share some uh, uh, 
uh, kind of a define and a mutual understanding of certain T words yeah. and T terms and what they are and uh, see a more Chinese approach of learning T mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's just uh, great and uh, hopefully we'll get our future readings more smooth that's right yeah so and like Jen said it's already translated it's a little chunky but I'm still gonna read it as is out to you guys and you'll see that on the screen so you can read along and um, then I'm gonna pop in with stuff that I found confusing about the translation or just couldn't understand because it was a little bit too chunky or too little bit um, incomprehensible and if anything was completely left out, Jen has reviewed all the Chinese and she'll, she'll make sure we don't miss any of the gold that's in there. Because um, like she said, the book is really rich with all kinds of great information. And yeah, so if, you, uh, if you're on Instagram, you gotta run on over to YouTube and catch our live session there because like I said, the book is gonna be on, we can't do that on Instagram. So pop on over there and once you get there, and if you are there, don't forget to click the subscribe button um, well, if you like it at the end, give us a thumbs up, yes. but also hit the notify bell so you'll know whenever we go live and do a Sunday tea book or whenever we post a, one of our videos, they can be about China, Chinese tea travel, uh, how to brew tea, just good information about tea, Chinese tea in general. So mm. click that button. Let's rock and roll. So Instagram, bye bye. I'm going to sign out. We'll see you on the <laughs> YouTube side and YouTube, I'm going to switch us over to the uh, book view. So right. give me a moment to do that. Yeah, I'm just uh, uh, brew some tea, but you can see we have different uh, levels of water because I realized when I put in the tea leaf, I put too much in his cup and not enough in my cup. So I just, uh, you know, when I brew, I just put a little bit less water so they can be ready about the same time. You um, might see us uh, spit the tea leaves a lot. <laughs> That's just how we... I'll try and keep it to a little, but she's right. It will probably be a lot. <laughs> and, um, but I'm always impressed how you, when you brew, you're always paying attention to those little details. I still find that pretty tricky. I'm really, I more go for symmetry, fill the both glasses, even kind of an equity thing, I think, built into me. Right. But, um, but yeah, so let me move that down. I don't think that will change the view. No, it Is looks it pretty one? good. Great. No, it looks, looks fine. Awesome. All right, so we'll go to also. I so think. Brenda is having some ginger made this afternoon. That's cool. Yeah, and let us know what else you guys are brewing, yeah. which are all brewing out there. All right. So uh, China tea. That is the book we are reviewing. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I see the tea stand I put on the book. Yes, I noticed that as we go. If you pay close attention, that's funny. You notice that. I totally noticed that too. And as you go, you'll probably notice the book cover, especially the cover and table of contents, will get more and more worn out uh, and more weathered. It'll get this more is more nutty. More uh, we, yeah, like compared to how we oh, brew yeah. that uh, a lot, in a guy one. A lot. I can't even touch it. Super hot. <laughs> All right, guys. So last week we finished up with um, uh, the the. Uh, Tea specification for fresh leaf. If you remember, we went over that beautiful diagram. Today we're picking up with appreciation of tea and we'll give you a little teaser preview into part two. Mm. So uh, sans plus tarder, without further ado, let's rock and roll right into it. There's some beautiful pictures of tea. Not so beautiful in the scan, but in the book, they're quite lovely. All right, so here we go, guys. Appreciation of tea. China is the great country of tea. The distinct reason is that there are a lot of species. As the saying that we can count the stars in the sky, but we cannot name all of the tea. We can see various names of tea in the shop. They make us dazzling. Okay, so, right, pretty chunky, um, pretty chunky um, English, but also not too hard to understand. The one thing I did trip on right away when I read this was the distinct reason is that there are a lot of species. So if you're mm. a little bit into tea or maybe a lot into tea like I am, I immediately went into my cultivar and varietal mm. hat. But after you read on, you realize, no, 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 no. We're talking about types of tea, you know, Longjing and uh, Bido Chun, uh, Bai Mun Dan, uh, Moonlight. So it's right, not right, really yeah, talking yeah. about cultivar, yes. am I right? Yes. That's what Just I kind of picked of up. Tea. Yeah. So, but other than that, it's pretty, um, it's pretty straight up. I love that the, they make us dazzling. That's just cute. 
they make us dazzling. It sounds like they bling us out. But what it just means is that there's a dazzling, a stunning number of these teas, which is, again, I think understandable. You guys can let me know if you agree that that was pretty understandable, but I just thought that was cute. Right. Um, yeah. So just the breadth and depth of different Chinese teas is indeed staggering. Like, uh, I would use the word staggering because if you're staggering. getting into it okay. and trying to get to know it, it's just like, oh, what? If you, if you thought there was just black tea and oolong, and then you find out, no, in, in the black tea, there's like... It's just always more, the more you learn, right? At first, it's just the old tea. Then you got to know black and green. Then there's more yeah. different black, different green. Right. Yeah, so that was about it. I think pretty a pretty standard intro. Probably not, not too much hidden in no, there. No, pretty like the gist of it. You know, it's mm. just an intro. Have you been able to sip yet? I'm a little oh, yeah. bit dying. You got to blow it. Mm. And, you know, once the leaf is sink a little bit, so you can just uh, mm. have some. But uh, sometimes I'm rushed to have some, so I blow but it. But the nutty, though. The, the nutty is really more than way, just... Yeah. Uh, I, might, uh, I might take a couple notes, guys, while I'm doing this, because I might mm. put a little bit of um, update brewing notes in the, uh, on the description on the website. Right. Because the nuttiness is just about stunning. With, uh, it way more than Gaiwa. Gaiwa, mm. I would say that was pretty... Subdued nuttiness is a little hint, not so much. Mm. More nutty sweet. Oh. You know, like um, very good as well, but um, I think I would go with this kind of a brew with this tea in general. But I'm um, going to have to pause green for a tea moment. is always better. I found green tea, and this uh, tumbler kind of shape holds the, especially the way, how much uh, uh, water I put. Mm. You get the fragrance trap there better? Is it? Yeah, because I mm. leave yeah. this much while yeah. yours is pretty yeah. kind of then a, blowing away. Yeah, like a gavani. Mm. So really like a soy, she's been, you've been, those huang, uh, I call them yellow peanuts, which they're not. She's been frying these soy nuts and it actually has like a sweet version of that aroma. Instead of roasty, it's deep like... Deep fry? A, yeah. I have been deep frying it, so... It has that kind of a, that's what I often call that a soil milk because it has the soil bean flavor, but it has that creaminess in it that I feel like a soil milk brings up more. All right, so I'm going to read naming of the tea next. Um, mm -hmm. Still a little mm -hmm. hot to drink, but the leaves, I had a leaf in my mouth, very really tender. Sweet. Mm. I like that. Oh, it's really good after pizza. <laughs> <laughs> after pizza, right. <laughs> Naming of tea. There's a good story about pizza and tea that maybe someday we'll tell you. We'll see about that. Okay, so naming of tea. Some names are according to their different shapes. So sorry, we had a big break on the tea now, but I'm diving back into the text, guys. So we're here at the naming of tea. Oh, I didn't turn right. on my highlighter. Let me turn on my highlighter. Oh, there's no highlighter today, I think, guys. Come on. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to try and get the highlighter on. Be a good tech team. Tube? No. It's really buried here. I gotta grab the toolbar and I gotta go here. So annoying. I'm just gonna read. Okay. Some <laughs> names are according some names are according to their different shapes. For instance, gunpowder tea, acupuncture needle tea, etc. Some are named combining with local mountains, for example, West Lake Dragon Well. Pu, To, Fo, Ti, etc. Some are based on the historical stories. For instance, Robe Ti and Iron Mercy Goodness. That's cute, huh? There are about more than... Goddess. Well, that's what I'm supposed to say, but it says goodness in English. Oh. Oh. There are... I'm really... I just realized it's that. It's actually just, really hard. Okay. Because I try to read word for word and I right, sometimes right, auto-correct, right. but I really don't want to. I auto-correct it. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to. Okay. Okay, carrying on. There are about more than 1,000 kinds of tea that can be named in our country now. Okay, so that's the section there. So, um, yeah, so definitely, again, another a bit of a bumpy one. Um, so the overall, I think, basically pretty good though, right? There's a couple ways to name tea by its shape, by its where it's from, or um, by some historical story or whatever. So the main gist is intact, yeah, no yeah. doubt. But there's some fun stuff in here again. And it's right. going to be even more interesting once we get the translation. Because for me, one of my main questions was what I want to know what 
I've heard of gunpowder tea, right? Probably many of you have. It's a pretty common. That's not a shape. Is gunpowder a shape? What it literally is just powder, no? We I, apparently it's called gunpowder tea because it, the shape looked like gunpowder, like black powder, uh, something like that. We call that zhu cha. That's why it's a shape. Zhu means around the pearl is shape. So gunpowder tea is a zhu cha. Means it's a, mm. it's also named after it's a shape. However, we think that looks more roundish, look right, right, rather than powder. <laughs> There's a. A, we can speculate on a lot of reasons like a lot of the gunpowder tea may have been so cheap in the west it was right. powdery it's one of the earliest uh, that's what uh, mm. earliest exporting teas especially in green tea domain yeah so that's very popular in the west yeah. as a gunpowder tea. that's right so it was a great one to it's choose like 18 19th century when it started mm. to export maybe at that time what people think is different than what we think right now so yeah that's right but I was like, what is acupuncture needle tea? I really want to try that tea because um, <laughs> I didn't know they make such a thin, I almost thought of like, I think it's sencha or the, you know, those the ones that are almost like needles, like pine needles. Mm. Uh, there's a Japanese tea like that. So I was like, oh, I didn't know we had that in Chinese tea. Well, bad news is just a silver, silver it's, needle. It's a silver needle, badly translated. So wah, yeah. wah. <laughs> already knew that. And it's just uh, for regular people, if you... Uh, my, by regular people, I mean, it's not much a tea lover or doesn't know much about tea. When they see a lot of those names, it's just, uh, you know, the closest thing to what uh, we would know from daily life is uh, probably acupuncture needle. That is right. an engine silver needle. It's a, like a really thing and stuff. It has nothing to do with the tea shape. Right. in terms of acupuncture needles right vis-a-vis -vis the silver needle and because we were in the shape zone yes. that's why i was thinking it was really thin and long and like um like that kind of needle right not even thinking of bai hao gem which is pretty plump you know and more right. of a metaphoric uh um more of a metaphoric silver needle it yeah. doesn't really look like a needle right it's yeah. more about the fur the, the furs. <laughs> the furs. So another fun thing in here that I found interesting was the um, was the pu pu tofu tea because I, I I'm sure all of you guys out there are similar. You're wondering about uh, if you see something oh, you, got you don't. That working? No, I don't. If you see something you don't <laughs> recognize, you're probably wondering what is it. So that's what I'm wondering. I never heard of pu tofu tea. Pu tofu tea right and so that's an interesting point right so that is a mm, you so far you probably noticed when it comes to tea name the book is pretty loose in terms of translation sometimes it's a p sometimes it's a mm. english if they can be translated like a west lake dragon well it's a xi hu long jing right so it kind of a easy quote unquote easy to translate so it's a translated then this the Puto Fu Cha is actually four character Puto is the location is in Zhejiang Fu Cha is a Puto Shan is a big Puto mountain is the big Buddhist mountain mm. uh, one of the holy mountains so it's a uh, if uh, there is a trans if we have to translate that it's probably Puto as one word mm. which is the location the mountain Fu is a Buddhist tea, Fu Cha. Mm. It's a, just a generic to say the, the tea produced from there, like, you know, their local teas, just uh, in general, yeah. cause like that. Yeah. Like uh, we also mentioned before, like uh, Wu Dang Dao Cha, like uh, from, which means uh, Wu Dang is the area, the one of the holy mountains in, uh, uh, of uh, Taoism, mm. right? Then Dao means uh, Taoist uh, tea is just uh, where the local yeah. uh, make tea It's and like drink. border tea in concept it's similar like you have border tea it's just a generic name for tea kind of in that zone mm. uh, Fo Cha is, is like if we said priest tea it It's just the uh, monks yeah. uh, and uh, those how do you call Taoist? Uh, Taoist monk yeah Okay okay we call they them make too. a tea and uh, yeah. Uh, develop this local culture of drinking tea for their yeah. uh, practice. What I found interesting is again, like the the original translator, the the way she paired it by by breaking up pu and tofu, it's not straight wrong, right? It's just a misinterpretation because of a. It doesn't uh, because uh, 
Because like sometimes when we see a word, a kind of Chinese words are made of uh, characters. When、mm. it's not sure how to combine those、uh, characters into the proper words, we gravitate towards what's familiar. Right. And、uh, to her,、uh, maybe a four two a. Two four. Two four. Is the more familiar, which is related to Buddhist way of calling Buddha. Right. So that's why、uh, then pu become a not so sure why it's in France. So it become an individual word. Then, right. Uh, uh, tofu is one thing. Then tea. Yeah. So it's just、uh, again, but it, I just wanted. I I thought it was interesting discussing that because. That's a case where a lot of I don't know if this is a lot of Westerners or just me or a few people, but sometimes there's a tendency to think that、uh, if you know if you can read and write Mandarin or read、mm. and write Chinese, you can look at it. For example, a lot of people just ask Chinese people, "What is this tea?"、Uh -huh. or "What is this?" Like、uh, expect them to know just because they read and write. But this one was was tricky, and there's a few traps.、Uh, we see shukuara is probably the number one example, right?、Mm -hmm. A lot of people calling that cooked tea because shu is a can be cooked,、mm -hmm. it's, but it's it's really should be、uh, ripe, right? Right. If you have to translate, and this isn't quote unquote wrong, but if you know tea, it's straight wrong. It's fucha is a kind of generic tea, monk tea, and puto is where it's from.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, just I thought that was really interesting and、yeah. a good.、Uh, A good thing to keep in mind when you're when you're working with tea and you know getting information about tea.、Mm -hmm. And I love the robe tea. I assume I think everybody can figure out robe tea is dahong pao, dahong pao, yes. Right, and、uh, the iron goodness, mercy, iron mercy goodness is is obviously、uh, the iron goddess of mercy. So take one in. But those were cute. I just had to mention those. Mercy goodness. Okay, okay. It's just a random kind of thing, kind of a. Translation, but the last the last sentence I felt like it lost a little bit of the flavor. The Chinese version, the English version says there are about more than one thousand kind of tea that can be named in our country now.、Mm -hmm. The Chinese sounded is just those na just those teas with names that we can name out is over a thousand. I, I feel、you. like that's lost the. Meaning a little bit. Yeah, I think what it's implying in Chinese is, is there's that there's way more. There's, there's way more, and、yeah. only a thousand have quote unquote pseudo Name. official names. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there is a difference. Yeah. And not to mention, uh, nowadays this is what ten years ago ish, kind of a while ago. But now when we look at teas,、uh, and a lot of times people will ask me, oh, do you know this tea or that tea?、Mm. Sometimes I really don't know because. Tea name nowadays is really casual.、Mm. It's because、uh, you know you have official tea. For example, somebody who produces say Longji, right? It's a Longji.、Mm. Then under brands, they might have different grades rather than how usually old times maybe call that first grade, second grade, third、mm. grade Longji. Because of marketing and some purpose, they have to name them beautifully, like uh, uh, turning off. Jade belt, or something, something like it. I I、right. don't know. I'm making the things up, but I just don't know. Like, a, you know, marketing name them、yeah. different grades. So every brand they might have that, and they print it like that. Well, how about、so、monkey some, pick? That might be a、uh, <laughs> just love picking on monkey pick tea. <laughs> yeah, but that's not like one brand. What I mean right, is,、right. Uh, even under some certain teas, even though this tea might in general. They belonging to Longjing, but、uh, its product name might have different names.、Right. That、uh, if you just ask me those names, I might not know because different companies might name their teas differently. Right. You know what、right. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily the only. There's no legal like、uh, supervision. Like you can only、yeah. tea name tea after its cultivar right, or after、right. its、uh, traditional name. There's、mm -hmm. tons of new teas out there now. Right. Right. I guess back in the days of tribute tea, it was a little bit more official. Probably the name teas were kind of、uh, they got if they get to the emperor for sure, that's going to have some kind of official name, right? Yeah, old times because the、uh, uh, when is a tribute tea is pretty specific. Those、mm. are tribute tea. Those are what tea, what tea. Is、uh, the marketing, the whole trading about tea is not as uh, um, proper, uh, right? Prosper. Not as official, right? Yes, not as much, not official. As as much as the mark, 
market activities requires different things. Like right. uh, Nike, what is that, right? You, it's just a pair of uh, sports shoes, but they have Air 270, Air right, something, right. you kind of have Hundreds to of know brands. it, yeah, to yeah. know, okay, what you're saying is a pair of shoes, mm. and that style of shoes, right. that's because of the commerce, activities sure, requires sure. that right, right. while back to just decades ago when there was the uh, uh, central government controls it's very clear the one to ten or something right. great so it's easy for exporting and stuff it's more it's less of this kind of uh, again marketing right it's all marketing driven Right. Basically, to have a different name, unique identity. Right. And it makes like sense, that. right? Because yeah. people, people got to sell their tea. The goal is to sell out of your tea. Yeah. Right? All I'm saying is just that there's a way more name now. And sometimes the name and tea are not, uh, right. that doesn't reflect as much. Right, right. So you see a label, you read that, mm. you have no idea. Maybe better, if you see the leaf, you might be able to have a better understanding mm. of what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so that's a good segue into uh, classification of tea. Mm. The next section, all right, classification of tea. There are many kinds of tea according to, their, according to their picking time. Teas can be classified into spring tea, summer tea, autumn tea. In addition, they can be classified into mountain tea and plain tea according to their planting geographic location. Although there is not a unified way to classify tea, it is methodical to classify tea into green tea, black tea, oolong tea, white tea, yellow tea, and dark tea, which, according to different processing way, such six categories are called the basic types. Apart from this, there is pre reprocessing tea, which is processed on the basis of the above six types. For example, scented tea, solid tea, and instant tea, etc. Mm -hmm. Dark tea generally includes Hunan dark tea, Hubei old oolong tea, Sichuan dark tea, Yunnan dark tea, etc. For a long time, our authority tea books and tea dictionaries sort puar into dark tea. However, some experts think puar should be listed separately. This book, in the form that loved by people to introduce green tea, white tea, yellow tea, black tea, oolong tea, dark tea, and scented tea. Okay, so not too bad. The last paragraph was a little clunky for sure, but mm -hmm. going back to the little, um, the first tea, first I have a note to prop our videos because we, this classification of tea, we've got actually two great videos already mm -hmm. out I there. Actually, uh, and in those videos, I actually cover this mm -hmm. section, right? Yes, yeah, really well. That's what reminded me of it right away. So we've got a 101 version, which you should start with, and a 201, which kind of take it to the next level for yes. tea classification. Yes. So definitely check those out. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, in, but other than that, in para, like in para one, I didn't really have any questions too much. But in para two, they mention uh, solid tea, and that threw me off. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what it was. Press the tea. Oh, it's simply pressed tea. Yeah. So like it's one of the post processing. Post right? You steam it yes. and squish it. Yes. Right. <laughs> squish it. Well, you know, press it into yeah. a brick, <laughs> but being tall, whatever yeah, the shape might shape. be. Yeah. Yeah. There's some really fun shapes out there too, with mm. really fancy characters. Now you have chocolate. Shape. Chocolate bars. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of shapes. Um, and I thought it would be interesting. A lot of tea lovers, especially if they tend to follow us uh, because we're a little bit uh, loose leaf tea and fancy, I, I bet you a lot of them haven't, I don't know, let us know out there if mm. in the comments down below, have you encountered instant tea? And the reason I wanted to just talk about it for two seconds is not because you're, you're necessarily going to find any real stunning instant teas, but I have to say I have had some Chinese instant teas that are pretty darn drinkable, which which blew me away because uh, mm. you pour these out of a little, a little. It's almost more like shaped like a straw than a bag, and put it in your cup and you add hot water. It's just like instant coffee, right. but it actually was still pretty delicate and pretty drinkable. Again, not nothing tasting great, but I wonder mm. if ever, if anybody else has encountered those. It's an interesting area of post process tea yeah, that yeah. in the loose leaf domain we rarely talk about because. Um, tend to get looked down on, but it's an I a very interesting space in the in uh, the in the field. It's kind of a match the fast paced uh, lifestyle, right, right, and just exactly. have the tea right there and go. And of course, scented tea is what we more encounter: ja our jasmine greens, mm. uh, maybe scented fujuan, or yeah. uh, you know stuff like that. Yeah. 
I like that the paragraph doesn't focus on green tea though, because you, a lot a lot of tea people, myself included, I didn't know initially that you know there was more than just jasmine green. I didn't you know. Uh, then we when we early on we had the uh, rose black, and I'm like, oh, rose black. I didn't know you scented black tea. And then since then I've had some Osmanthus Fujuan. Oh, uh, you know, just anything decades, can be scented, right? Uh, decades ago, it's really popular to scent poor tea. No, scented puar. Now oh people yeah, because like, puar oh. is hard. Nobody wants it. It's a right. You know, it's a bottom tea. <laughs> Try to make a drinkable kind of. Yeah. So you said we have those uh, um, old times. There's a rice scented, a sticky rice mm -hmm. scented. There's a rose scented. There's a osmanthus scented. And uh, I do you think that was a little bit because green tea is I was gonna say was but it is still really prolific in China I mean that is the, for many oh, cultures yeah, that's for the sure. go-to tea and that has that life floral Green tea and is dark like tea is the opposite it's pretty absolutely. robust right so it's trying it's to draw it's not just in. robust and honestly not as aromatic mm, for sure is it like the the main most Chinese uh, honestly when we drink tea even those regions where we produce dark tea, for example, Hunan or stuff, we will drink a green tea. Green mm. tea is our tea. It's cha. Yeah. Mm. It, till the early, like late 90s, uh, then there's a Tie Guan Yin, oh, and still a lot of people think Tie Guan Yin is green tea. Right. Because they make that green. Uh, if you're interested in that topic, I uh, explain a little bit more yeah. in the, our uh, China magazine, the 2019 version. I, Talk about Tie Guan Yin. I explain a little bit. Yeah, about really the good backstory of Tie Guan Yin and how it broke out of ANC. Right, Inst but uh, so to make that uh, to more people's liking, you gotta add some flavor or aroma. They, they want that aroma, right? Yeah, that, that dark uplifting tea. Honestly, aroma. if you don't smell, it, there's nothing like that. No, for sure. Right, yeah. Yeah, so it's totally different. It's not something people would gravitate towards for, especially a green tea drinker. So Brandon, uh, let's just go out for some comments here. Brandon says, haven't had any instant tea that wasn't nest tea. Mm, oh. That's what I thought. Um, but there are some um, some cheap teas that I still enjoy, mostly flavored teas, but nothing nothing beats loose leaf tea at the end of the day. Mm. Nest tea is what, like the like can? I, the iced tea can of iced tea ah, powder. Or, right, right. Yeah, probably pretty sweetened. Mm. And that's this, I totally agree with him. Like I definitely had nothing, no instant teas except those iced tea powder. We didn't ever think of the, the closest would be tea bag, which is mm -hmm. not an inst, It's not quote unquote dissolved in the water instant style. Right. That's just a. It's a leaf in a bag, right? Uh -huh. And chopped and cut and used just a little touch. Great. Thanks. I'm actually going to drink that pretty good. Oh right. I chop my hey Ebenezer Itawu. Really sweet. He O oh, says, um, or is that all his name? Hajai. I think that's all his name. What makes tea instant? Would it be that there's no need to steep wash? Yeah, that's a great yeah. question. So again, because it's not I something we're familiar with. I was wondering the same thing because when I mentioned uh, when we talk about instant tea, oh, I could think it's a pouch and powder, kind of a literary instant. I wouldn't. Like I wouldn't think of a tea bag as instant tea, even no, though it's not. almost the same, almost the almost same. the same as powder. And same with the nasty, I wasn't uh, like a, I wasn't. I didn't even think of nasty. I really thought but those are technically pop. it's an instant. Probably not pop. It's an instant. Uh, it comes in a can. It's got the brown powder in it. So to answer your question, Ebenezer, um, what we've encountered are little pouches with a. Mm. They are post processed like extracts of tea. I'm trying to remember if. Uh, Anyway, they're post-processed extracts of tea, which is why they covered it in the post-processing section. Mm. And it's literally a powder. So I've had a dark tea one. You put the powder in your cup, you put boiling water on it, the right yes. amount, and you have dark tea that it fully dissolves. Turn, and the color is Turns healthy. the liquor reddish. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had dark and I've, I think I've even had like a... There's think, instant matcha too. Yeah, there's instant matcha. And um, I think I've had a maybe an instant fujuan like one was a puar yeah. supposed to be a shu puar and one was a fujuan <laughs> you have more than that maybe. i remember when early uh like a oh black i had a years black. ago mm. i gave you a lot of instant because <laughs> i don't oh that's right I don't, before we even started gen tea before he even drinks tea so i was like i don't like those instant powders mm. so i just give that all to him there's instant powder like a black tea ginger mm. made 
Mm. There is a black. Not as good as the Lustre Farol, which oh. Brandon, by the way, is drinking. He's on the third infusion, the wine right. also. I just feel like that. Uh, yeah, Brandon's right. It's exactly like, like instant coffee. It's instant just instant coffee. tea. Yeah. yeah. But that's right. Uh, you gave yeah, me a bunch, and also at World Tea Expo, I picked some up just yeah. to try because it's yeah. it, from a tasting perspective, it's interesting to see. Well, what's what's the, what's the flavor gap? What's missing? What yeah. are they keeping in those yeah. things? They tend to be f uh, taste very taste focused. Mouthfeel, I feel totally lost. I found the aroma is not there. An like aroma. it has mm. a flavor, but if I breathe mm. out or stuff, mm. it's empty. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like it. However, I still prefer that than just water. I really don't mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. just plain water. So that is what they mean by instant tea in right. terms of post processing. Mm. Okay, guys. So this is pretty exciting because that wraps up section one. Yeah, we're part one of the book. The chapter. So we're heading into part two. Um, we're gonna get. We're gonna just start with the little preface to part two, which is really. It's gonna be a really fun, um, a really fun part of the series because we're getting into making tea. Just three steps. So we'll see what those three steps are. Mm -hmm. But it's all about brewing, and um, tasting. So let's see what the text says. The the teaser text. Here we go. If you just want to solve the demands of water, you can grasp the tea into the boiling water. But if you want to appreciate the real taste of tea, you had better put in some time and effort. Time, mood, tea selected, water, tea sets, brewing, tasting, and enjoying the whole process. Naturally, to master a better skill and method to make tea, you will find that the process is not as complicated as you have imagined. Okay, so again, uh, pretty clunky, um, even the beginning, right? I think we can understand basically that they're talking about m making tea, but uh, at the beginning I said, I remember if you want to solve the demand of water, you can you grasp... Quench the thirst. Yeah, that, thirst. I figured that out. You can kind of guess that that means, oh, if you just want to quench your thirst, just throw the leaves in the boiling water and you're good to go. Mm. And uh, tea is very good at that uh, because you get that hui gun, right? Gets you salivating that, that return sweet. Hui gan, get mm -hmm. you salivating and really um, do a little bit more than just immediately quench your thirst, but keep quenching your thirst for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Um, and then it talks about if you want to improve. That's what I have with this tea. When you said mm. that, strong, I really feel and, it, and yeah. it's really sweet. Yeah. I had a I had a leaf the other day. It was a different green tea. It was those ball. Did we post the ball on Instagram? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yesterday so we, we, we had, had a almost the size of a like about this size, maybe a, almost one and a half, two centimeter ball of tea. So bigger than like a dragon pearl by a lot. Mm, mm. It's a full serving of green tea. And I ate one of those leaf and I had that real, you know, if you eat the leaf, you get that bitter shot. And right away, my mouth is watering mm. and sweet uh, after the bitter, which is uh, divine. Another example of that after sweet that really quenches your uh, thirst. So, but anyway, so back to the text, right? Mm. Pretty understandable. If yes. you want to learn to really get into tea, it take a little bit of time, but don't worry, it's not as hard as you think. Mm. And they point out a few key things when talking about tea brewing. Sometimes I think we don't uh, we don't think about much, uh, like a time, mood, and choose of tea. Like mm. when we talk about water, or vessel, or brewing, or yeah. tasting, we it's dive pretty, right into the physical technical aspects, yes. right? But I found uh, to include time and mood and the selection of tea is very interesting and sometimes overlooked mm, often when like, i read that i realized how guilty i am of that me too that's really. what i felt mm. too like i i keep forgetting measuring that when we're talking about it because it's important and mm. sometimes we do that uh, subconsciously right mm -hmm. the simplest thing happens is when we're choosing a tea why today we drink green tea we didn't drink say Feng Huang Dan's home or stuff like that where today is really hot I suddenly just want some aged uh, white tea mm -hmm. or some aged like a oolong that kind of come in the profile with the mood with the even the weather the what's going on really affects uh, the overall appreciation right? yeah like a, and the sometimes experience. yeah I remember when we started I was really insist on not having too much sim sample pack <laughs> when we started because I don't like to give people 
one tea and just try it out because it really depends I it happens to me a lot that I have a tea I didn't like it and I have it again I really enjoy it the surrounding of that mm. it really affects how you enjoy a tea oh I see what you mean right like, I always like you don't want to have a one, one shot I have a metaphor with negative. music like that right often when I listen to music especially an artist I know I listen to that and I listen to it once I never always know I'm going to listen again no matter what Even, or if it's a new artist I don't listen once because of that right. I want to get beyond my first impression and whatever's going on at that time affecting my overall acceptance right similar right, right? yeah you don't want to so you don't like to give a single shot sample because because you could easily mm. just say no or yes you know it's the same thing it could be I going either way and mm. uh, what it affect it could be the mood could be just a uh, just even how physically that day yeah. I am or sometimes we didn't brew that right yeah. I always yeah. feel like uh, uh, have a two to three sample is like a yeah. sample pack is more fair to teach just like your mother used to make you do when you don't like the first time you try a new veggie you got to try that a couple times right same thing you got to be a grown-up and try yeah. that a couple times on your own because your mother won't make you anymore <laughs> are you a veggie hater <laughs> not at all we just had that rule and the reason i say that is because that rule saved me from not liking a bunch of veggies that i quote unquote didn't like did it save uh, you from seaweed though no seaweed's one of the few things i eat it though <laughs> i eat it okay, okay. we eat seaweed in our house mm -hmm. it's delicious all right so anyway that's a little teaser of uh what's coming in section two mm. um i'm really excited about it because actually next week is about a little bit of appreciation mm. which touches a little bit um uh, i think a lot about uh, a m big chunk of a missing part in i feel in the west uh, talking about tea looking people this goes mm. a little bit more detail of what are you looking at oh those are loose leaf beautiful loose leaf that's just the beginning there's more oh, to yeah, look yeah. for and stuff yeah it's and really incredible and uh, it really gets into the sort of the art of tasting tea a bit yeah 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 it really like so that's the part i'm really excited to share mm -hmm. so but make sure you tune in next week for that that's mm -hmm. will be episode five and um just one more comment from ebenezer he said cool tea powder which can dissolve that way tea leaf does not get thrown away nope Mm. <laughs> that's right it's just uh, water in the cup so um, yeah so that wraps up our um, first chapter our first part part one is done mm. we're heading into part two super exciting yes. so if you um, if you have any suggestions mm. or any improvements we have been testing this uh, model this format. of uh, mm -hmm. this format of doing the book translation any recommendations suggestions anything we can improve yeah. uh, you know comment or text text us I mean Instagram yeah reach out to us on social media yes. or leave a comment down below mm -hmm. in the uh, comments right there mm. um, we had a great one already just to slide our little the little image of us right up here to put yes. it in the upper instead of the lower yes. so it's not blocked you know that stuff really, yeah as small as that or if you have big ones like whatever mm -hmm. you think uh, throw it out it might be a great idea we'll do we'll see what we can do with it we really appreciate it yeah and um, if you haven't already make sure you click that subscribe button down there click on the little bell so that you get notified whenever we go live or post a new video mm -hmm. okay. if you like the content we're sharing be sure to hit the like button and mm -hmm. share with your friends yeah and until next time keep, keep steeping bye-bye <laughs>